Hi, today's video is like a part 2 for the previous one, which I'll be linking so you can go watch if you haven't already. And in this video, I'll start from where I left off last time and turn this tooltip up here into the second one down here, which has a transparent background and a continuous gradient across the text and border. So let's go to the code. And this is what we had last time. And the first thing I'll be doing is comment out this radial gradient, which creates the rounding of uh, the arrow tip. Uh, just uh, take it out. Make sure it's still valid CSS. And also take out this uh, stuff, even though it doesn't matter, because if we subtract nothing from this bottom layer, then the result is going to be the exact same. And one other thing I'll be doing is just take out the standard versions because uh, the first thing I'll be showing you is the non-standard solution to this problem, which I really believe should be standard because it would make our life a lot easier. The standard solution also requires a pseudo element. So that's what I'll be doing in the second part of the video. But first off, let's uh, get a solution. Okay, so the first step at this point is invert what we have here. And with mass compositing, inverting means overlaying a solid layer and applying the exclude operation, which is XOR for WebKit browsers. The non-standard version for WebKit browsers is, uh, of exclude is uh, XOR. So let's take a fully opaque layer now, if you understand how XOR works, anything you XOR with 1 gets inverted. So 0 XOR with 1 is 1, and 1 XOR with 1 is uh, 0. So uh, in here, what you XOR are the alphas of the layers. So the alpha of this one is always 1, everywhere, because it's a gradient from red to red. It's everywhere. It's fully opaque. The alpha is 1 everywhere. So we're going to have XOR, and now you're going to see that we have what we had before inverted. Now we take this radial gradient and we just drop it on top. We add it on top. And uh, the non-standard WebKit version for add is source over, which uh, we already have here. So as you can see, source over, and we're going to put it here. Okay, so now we have the inverted version with the rounding. Now we're going to add another layer. And again, it's going to be a source over. So just to add it on top. And this is going to be a conic gradient like this one, except uh, the tip of uh, the arrow down is going to start from the center of the rounding. So uh, let me show you that. So it's not going to start at the very bottom. We're just going to offset it up. And uh, the center of this radial gradient, as you can see, it's uh, at that offset value from there. So we're just going to take that. So it's going to be uh, minus. And we need to interpolate uh, the SAS. So this is going to be calc. Calc. OK. So now we're starting to see something there. Uh, next thing we'll be doing is adding another rectangle within the padding box. And it's going to be at a distance equal to that uh, a tiny border width from each and every one of these edges. So it's going to be that uh, border width is also equal to the rounding radius for all of those uh, corners there. So it's going to be this and we place it in the middle. So at 50%. Okay, and the dimensions are going to be 100%. And we need to subtract that border width, which is the rounding of every corner. So it's going to be twice, we need to subtract it once on each side. Okay, and we're not going to see any results because it keeps repeating. So we, we need to set no repeat. And now that we've set this, um, oh yeah, we need to add another source over here. Now we're going to see a result. Uh, so yeah, you can see those gaps, but we want those gaps along both dimensions. So um, now what we'll be doing is selecting this, copy, paste. So uh, this works. Now that we've done this, we need to invert everything once more. So once more, we take this, 
put it on top, add XOR right here. Okay, and we're getting closer. You can see those artifacts at the corner and we'll be getting rid of them with clip path inset. Uh, and this is going to cut one pixel along each edge, but it doesn't really work because we have those roundings there. So it's, it's cutting, but it's cutting outside the rounding. So we need to add the rounding, so round, and we use the same value as for border radius. So we just uh, copy paste it. Uh, the sad thing is that while this works, I believe that clip path is only supported with a prefix in Safari. So sadly we need to add WebKit, yeah. So that it works in Safari as well. So yeah, that uh, took care of the artifacts, but we also need to add the text. So we add the text on top. Um, so just uh, add it on top. And the mask clip is going to be text. And this is what is non-standard and is not supported by Firefox. So here we're just going to add on top, which means source over. Source over. Okay. And now we have the result, except the color is white and it covers uh, the gradient. So we set the color to transparent. And now we have the result we wanted. Okay. Now, the thing I want to show you right here, if from this point on, it starts repeating. So if we take out these values, CSS is going to automatically start repeating from here. So the result is going to be the same. So yeah, I've done this. And this is the reason why I took out that radial gradient from the end, because if we had source out, at the very end, then we wouldn't have had this repetition. The thing uh, with mass compositing, there's more than one way of getting the same result and whichever works uh, better for you, use that one. And now for the standard version. So we're going to have supports, not WebKit mask clip text. Okay, now do this. Okay, alignment fail. Now, the first thing I'll be doing is set mask none. Because for some reason, Firefox also applies the WebKit mask. Okay, and something else I want to do is make this uh, mask layer with the text optional. So put this inside a custom property and then we're going to reset this to nothing. Except SAS doesn't like this kind of value inside for a custom property. So what we need to do is quote this, unquote in SAS. And um, I think now we don't need to interpolate anymore, but before it wouldn't work without interpolation. I think now it works. Yeah, it does. But before we need to also do this interpolation so that it works. Now, apparently, it works without interpolation. And here, we're going to make the text nothing. So that's going to be unquote and uh, just a space. This is a value, uh, value in CSS for a CSS variable. OK, now, having done this, we're going to create a pseudo element after absolutely position it, uh, content nothing. Oops. Okay. And um, of course, we're going to need to set position relative here. We're also going to, since we don't clip the text with the masking, we're going to need to set background clip um, to um, text. Uh, and here we make this cover the entire parent, except this parent has quite a big border. Uh, and you should always remember that offsets are computed from uh, the padding limit. So if you have 
this box model. So you have the border box, the padding box. So this is the border width, this is the padding, and this is the content. And this is the padding limit, the outside of the padding. Offsets are computed from the padding limit. So if you want to also cover the border, we need negative offsets or we need zero offsets and the negative margin, which is equal to the border width. Now, what I'll be doing is zero offsets and a margin that's minus this border width. Okay, so you can also do the negative offsets, every offset to the same negative value. I don't know, I just, zero four times is easier than any other value four times, I guess. Okay, so margin minus that arrow height, which is also the set border width. Okay, having done this, we set background inherit. We also set border inherit. Um, and we also set border radius inherit. Um, and here we revert the background clip from text to border box. Okay, now having done this, we also set the mask. Uh, and since we don't have the first layer, this one right here, we're going to have those same values, but we're going to need to uh, repeat this one before we get to the next XOR or exclude in the standard version. So the mask composite is going to be exclude and three times add. Okay, and now I should check if this works in Firefox and I've just realized I'm only uh, showing you, um, I'm only recording this window. So now that I've switched to Firefox and I'm checking this, you can't see uh, me testing it. So let's see it. So there's this really weird thing that it takes a while to refresh. Yeah, it works. Okay, so yeah, it works in Chromium browsers. It works in Firefox. So that should be fine. This is what I wanted to show you for today. Thank you for watching. If you like this demo in particular, if you like my work in general, the work I've been putting out for over eight years, and you want me to be able to do more in the future, please consider supporting this. You can do this by uh, becoming a patron on Patreon. The link is going to be in the description or you can get me something off my Amazon wish list. The links are going to be in the description for that as well. Or you can at least share this to show the world what can be done with CSS these days. Because honestly, I think it's pretty damn cool. In any event, thanks for watching and until next time.